What's been interesting over the last three days is the fact that rates have come down you know, ac across the curve. And, and it makes you wonder whether actually the economy, the US economy, can withstand a higher interest rate environment after so many you know, two decades of relatively low rates. You know, can it actually stand a higher environment? Most people thought, well, it's the economy that's going to fall over. It ended up being the banking sector that fell over. And I just wonder whether it's a, a dress rehearsal for the sort of stagnation environment that we anticipate over the next few decades anyway. And actually, you can't have structurally higher rates um, and that we're going to be in a low rates forever regime because you, it, it's embedded in the system, whether it's the banking system or the economy itself or how leveraged consumers are, that you, you can't have higher rates. Um, Why won't this lead to a recession, Julian? Why won't it lead to a recession? Because I think unemployment remains very low. But, but and I think great and as long as everyone has employment, inevitably, employment inevitably falls on the back of the mm. kind of episodes we're seeing and has done every time historically. I don't quite know why this time is different. Well, I think it's partly because a lot of consumers are sitting on cash piles. So the leverage is slightly less important on this particular occasion. You know, the, the, the coronavirus kind of subsidies that were given out over the last two years has explained a lot of, of the kind of consumer robustness. And, and people talk about a rich session where US growth has slowed down, but actually it's the lower quintile of US consumers who are doing actually relatively well and doing a lot of the spending. Usually they're the ones that suffer. And this, this time, famous words, these, this time is different in that sense. The upper quintile are suffering. I'm sure there won't be any tears over that. But the lower quintile are doing better and they're still spending, so they're still sitting on cash. We've got plenty of time with you, but, but, that, but why are Americans carrying record credit card debt if they're doing so well with their household balance sheets? They're carrying a record high of almost $1 trillion worth of credit card debt at the moment. That, that's a sizable lump. Well, perhaps not choosing to pay it off. Um, at this moment, I'm just well, I'm, so I'm surprising. Up an 18, 19% interest rate. <laughs> yeah, so that's getting, just poor getting household management. Getting, they've got options to do that. Uh, li don't laugh, but literally very busy at work. I have read that studies that they are busy at work and household finances are not being managed very effectively because of the low unemployment. There have been studies that suggest. I know that sounds like a poor excuse. To, you know, to get yourself organised. Julian, you're a very smart man. That doesn't smell right. Um, do you know what? I, I would pay off my credit card and not incur a 19% interest rate, but I'm too busy doing an Excel spreadsheet for my boss. But also, the, the cash may be starting to run down. And at that point, at that point, then we may start right. to see the stress coming through. Julian, the market, um, as we can see in recent days, can skip from one fear to the next very, very quickly. And something that Carl Icahn was pointing out overnight was about the undercurrent still on inflation and how it has consequences for the economy. It's very damaging for society. Mm. We've had a number that 6%, that is uh, more than the 2% that the Fed's been aiming for. If we don't get back to the 2% target and that we still have a very stubborn inflation story, but you've got a Fed protecting itself or concerned about systemic risk if it does tighten from here, what's the underlying issue then for the economy of higher inflation for longer? Well, I think, to be fair to the Fed, they have spoken since October about multiple tools for, for multiple challenges. So they should be able to manage systemic risk on the one hand and inflation on the other. But there's no reason why they can't still go after inflation you know, with higher interest rates. Maybe pause next week. Well, well, I think that would be because reasonable. Because it tightens credit again, and we've just seen problems with tight credit, uh, how the, the market reacts, how customers react. I mean, we've just had one big technology company mm. already announcing more layoffs yeah. in the same area that is going to be hard hit. It's not going to be a ready employer scooping up other assets in that part of the world, potentially, yeah. if there are problems. I mean, there are interlinked parts to this story. Tighter credit's one thing, but unavailability of credit is another. And the Fed would freely admit that they don't want to make credit unavailable. They're happy to tighten it. I mean, that's the point, right? The point is to tighten credit and slow demand down. Um, but just not cut it off entirely. And that's why this crisis for them you know, required action, because it was threatening to cut things off entirely. Just to make it yours, what mm. have you been most excited about in this sell-down that think, oh, I can get some of this now a bit cheaper? Uh, well, technology, big yeah. tech, the, the stuff that you've been um, quite it's, critical of earlier today. Stuff, not specific the, stocks. The, the stuff I can see it there on the your The stuff on your there. Notes. Here we go. Let's do it. Sorry, <laughs> Arabile. We'll be with you in a year or two. Uh, the stuff that said now it's a year of efficiency. That yes, one. The year of efficiency. Doesn't that worry not you that you're specific. investing in companies <laughs> that think every other year is a year of inefficiency by, by, by the fact that this year is the only efficient well, year? Two years of incredible sales where they haven't <laughs> needed to concentrate sales. on efficiency. You just said sales, Julian. <laughs> sales don't equal profits. Anyway. I think in the aggregate, tech looks interesting in a lower rate environment. The net present value simply lifts up, and I think that's what we're facing. Yeah,